There it is. It's inside these ruins. As you can see, the place is crawling with monsters. Alrighty then. Stay back and take cover, Tiago. This could get dangerous. We'll take care of them. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I'm not about to cramp your style. or things could have gotten really hairy for him. Hey, look! That's gotta be it, right? Definitely looks like a mural. Hmm, true. Now that you mention it, most ancient murals take up a whole huge wall. This looks more like someone with a paintbrush got bored and started doodling. It does match the story he told us, though. There's a Saurian and a human, so... Is that supposed to be what an ancient contract ritual looked like? Eh, whatever. We're not here to decipher it. Just photograph it. That's a wrap. Let's take it back to Tiago. Go. <laughs> You've been robbed? Oh, Ponche. And I thought my luck was bad. Oh, I put blood, sweat, and tears into that. And now I've got nothing to show for it. Some gap toothed goon stole it from me. Tiago, is this the picture you were looking for? Let me take a look. Uh, yep, that's the one. Pyro Archon above, you two are superhumans. Hey, Ponche, come and say hi to these guys. They're gonna be the new flame bearers, and they're tough as nails. Wait, are you the Traveler and Paimon? Huh? You already know each other? I don't think so. My nephew Toba's been telling everyone about you. He says you're crazy strong, super friendly, that you helped him out, and that you're gonna be our flame bearers this turnfire night. So you're Toba's uncle. Great to meet you, sir. Sounds like we've managed to make a bit of a name for ourselves. <laughs> Toba's not wrong, my friend. These two are honestly some of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. Everyone speaks incredibly highly of them. Seriously. If you're comfortable telling them about what happened, I guarantee you they'll sort it out in no time. Really? All I want is to get the fruits of my labor back. Allow me to explain. Ponche is a well-known scholar within our tribe, author of the widely acclaimed book, Yupanki's Turnfire. Unfortunately, the book was stolen by a treasure hoarder a few hours ago. I spent years of my life researching that book. I visited every last ruin, interviewed every descendant of every hero in our history. On the word Malipo alone, I covered at least five different interpretations of the meaning based on accounts from different villages. It was an unparalleled masterpiece. And now it's all gone. That little goon ambushed me during my morning walk. He snatched all of my belongings, including my entire manuscript. That book was everything to him. It's like they robbed him of his soul when they took it. Look at him, lost and listless. He's a shell of the man he was. Dear honored guests of our clan, I am but a helpless old student, 
If only for Toba and Tiago's sake, please help me, I beg of you. See what I mean, Ponche? Now you've run into these two, your luck's about to change, big time. I don't know if he's still there, but come on, I'll take you. What do you want now, you old bum? God, you're a waste of space. Prepare to get shoved butt first into a tree hollow. Oh, what's this? Brought a little bodyguard with you, huh? All right, let's see what you've got. What? Eat dirt, suckers! The warriors, heroes, gods, and kids. Please, I don't. Oh yeah? Well, what I, I throw. You threw it away. The old bum's bag didn't have a single mora in it. Just a tatty old book. All that time lying in wait was for nothing. Hmm. Is that really the truth? The same place you found me. Look, I swear on the Pyro Archon, it's the truth. Okay, that's a pretty. What do we do now? It sounds like he's telling the truth. Right. Let's hope nobody gets to the book before we do. We'll never get it back then. Although the Turnfire is a heroic symbol in Hoitzitlan, it always comes with the more ominous implication of eventual tragedy. This holds true for all bearers of this ancient name in recorded history. Each one of them died of non-natural causes, as if the specter of the Turnfire was always lurking in the background. This appears to suggest the existence of some higher power that is always watching the name-bearer, examining their actions, and eventually demanding payment in return. None can escape this payment, unless, perhaps, they could honestly swear by Turnfire to never make a single mistake in their entire life. You punkies turn fire. What an incredible work on ancient name philology. I can't believe it was just lying there for me to take. Let me see, the author is... Ponche. Nice. A gentleman and a scholar. Uh, silence, book muncher. The great Kahula Howe will suffer your droning voice no longer. Do you truly find no joy at all in perusing such rich historical records? <laughs> joy? What joy is there in this pointless drivel? Well, it makes a pretty shocking prediction. Every bearer of the ancient name Malipo eventually meets a grisly end. Maybe that's the price you pay for the name that means price? What? You're saying Kenichi will die a violent death? <laughs> so I'll finally get to take over his body? When? When will that glorious day arrive? The great Gaul How demands to know! Wow, you are just irredeemable, aren't you? An agent of chaos down to the core. You make us Abyss Order folks look like saints in comparison. Uh, silence, maggot! To presume that anyone compares your kind with the great Kahula How is sheer vanity! And if that day ever comes, oh, your doom will soon follow. <laughs> you don't need to lecture me about Doomsday. Here's what I know, based on countless historical texts. All civilizations will be reduced to rubble by the passage of time. From ancient kingdoms, to heavenly thrones, to worlds beyond, there are no exceptions. 
but from the ruins of every civilization, the dust will rise and never settle, thus transcending the confines of time. That dust is what we call a civilization's spirit. And you, great Kahul Ahau, are one such speck of dust from a bygone age. I've paid dearly for the chance to observe you up close. Now, let me take a good look at you. We'll see whether any memories of that age still remain inside you. We're so sorry, Mr. Ponche, but we couldn't find your manuscript anywhere. Does that mean all of my hard work was for nothing? You gotta stay positive, Ponche. You might have lost the book, but the brains behind it are still intact. Surely you remember the main points, at least? The whole reason I worked so hard to get it finished before the Turnfire Night is because I hoped that maybe it might help us find a way through these trying times. But now... Well, not exactly. But I thought my research might at least be a starting point. Oh, really? So what did you find out in your research? I think the key to all of this lies in the power of Malipo. Panche, you know as well as anyone that ancient names don't hold any real power. Symbolic power doesn't count. You're right, but Malipo may be a special case. Given that it first arose in the era of the first Pyro Archon, it might contain remnants of Shibalanke's power. Yeah, I remember that story. My grandpa told it to me when I was a little kid. Maybe you're the special case. Most kids stop believing in that stuff by your age. I'm not talking about childhood superstitions here. There is evidence. Like what? Like the fact that the Mountain King is still alive. Everyone attributes that to the power of the Abyss. But there's more to it than that. The key factor is that Burkina summoned the power of Malipo at the cost of his own life. If you don't believe me, then answer me this. How many other creatures can you think of who lived longer, not shorter, after being contaminated by the Abyss? Um, Traveler, different situation but similar idea. Doesn't this remind you of the Hilly? So, I came to the conclusion that Malipo must refer to some mysterious ritual involving a tit-for-tat exchange. It began with the first Pyro Archon, fell with the Grand Alliance, then was buried in the Night Kingdom. And now, it awaits the call of its new bearer. Hey, hey? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Panche, but you seem to be getting a little overexcited. I'm sorry. I was originally planning on presenting my findings to Kanich. I'd hoped he would be attending the upcoming ceremony. Sounds to me like you dreamed up one fanciful theory to support another. Uh, Kanich, what are you doing here? I more or less finished what I was doing, so I came to have a quick catch-up. Now a good time? Kanich! I'm onto something! I haven't worked out all the details, but... but... You have to attend the Turnfire Night. Ponche here has done a lot of research on the history of the Turnfire, and thinks he might have found a way for you to solve the problem. I'll be there, Ponche. Let's go. Time to go. Here will do. Yeah. I'd like your help giving it a trial run tomorrow. If that works, we have our plan come Turnfire Night. Sounds like you're not considering Ponche's idea. You heard him. He hasn't worked out the details yet. We need a more practical solution with concrete steps to follow. Yet? Are you saying you think he might actually be onto something? I think it's possible based on something I know about the war 500 years ago. Burkina didn't fall to the Abyss. He was killed by the Mountain King in an episode of madness. In his final moments, 
Burkina made the fateful decision to not fight back and instead pass his blood and power on to the Mountain King. Maybe he thought the Mountain King was stronger than him and more valuable to the tribe. Or maybe it was just out of loyalty to his friend. Either way, I can believe the Turnfire was involved. Whether you think his sacrifice triggered it, or his fate was sealed from the moment he took the Malipo name, it makes sense to me. How can you drop these truth bombs with such a straight face? This is what I've gleaned from my many interactions with the Mountain King. His mind is so disordered, it took some time to piece it all together. The story Elder Trinidad told you was the more palatable version of events. The truth is even darker. The Mountain King's mind isn't just disordered. He is suffering and feels great shame. I believe he wants to be put out of his misery. What? Then... then what should we do? Should we grant him his wish? Of course not. We should help him move to a new home. It's the only practical solution. The Mountain King is a hero to my tribe. An object of worship, even. Ending his life would be like desecrating a statue. Still, he's been the cause of multiple disasters, and we can't afford to have any more. Ugh. Practical solutions hurt Paimon's brain. Can we follow our hearts next time? <laughs> then let's break for the day. I've already found a suitable venue for tomorrow. Here. Very punctual. Oh, so the gruesome twosome come crawling back. <laughs> Here to make amends after the gross irreverence you displayed last time. <laughs> Very well. The Almighty Dragon Lord Kahula How shall grant you the audience that you seek. Now pucker up and kiss our feet. <laughs> Kanich, didn't you say you found him a teacher? He's just as out of control as ever! Hey! No one gets to discipline the almighty Dragon Lord Kahula How! No one! Maybe because I've never had a gentle-natured companion like Paimon to compare against. It... Is that a compliment? Yeah. I see what I'm missing out on now. And it's a lot. Kanich! Oh, we could drown this measly flying ant in one droplet of spit! How dare you compare her to the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How? Oh, just wait till I possess your dead body! I will commit heinous atrocities, tear down your legacy, destroy your reputation, wreak havoc on your... Traveler, Paimon, let's get down to business. Once we've opened the beastly rift, you're welcome to toss a how in there for a couple of days. With pleasure, you don't need to ask twice. I got my hands on this device in a trade. It's meant as bait, but it'll also stabilize the abyssal energy. The rift towns will tear through space to get to this. Once they're here, we take them out and claim the rift for ourselves. You'll find out soon enough. First, let's try this out. They'll tear you to pieces given half the chance, so be careful. There is no escape! Let's light it up! Uh-oh. Are there even bigger ones on the way? You see, Kinich? I'm a man of my word. In fact, I'd say I under-promised and over-delivered. Nifty little gizmo, isn't it? 
I take it this is your true form? Now that our deal is complete, it's time to start the next phase of our relationship. I made a promise to the great Kahula Hao, and now I'm here to seize your body for his use. Cliché, I know. The hero's trusted partner sells him out to the Abyss in a shocking act of betrayal. Cue bad guy speech and drawn out death sequence. Huh? Angel? Huh? Huh? What are you two doing here? Oh, Mr. Kinich, this is not what we agreed on. Traveler, this is the gift I got you. I know you're looking for intel on the Abyss Order, so I thought he might be of use to you. But it looks like you've already met. Yikes. Frosty reception. Gotta say, I kinda pictured this moment going a little differently. Tears of joy welling up in your eyes as you say the words, It's good to see you again, old friend. Don't be ridiculous. Sounds like you've been reading too many romance novels. There we have it. Change is inevitable and nothing lasts forever. What a pity. Well then, time for you to meet the new me. This time, please call me Sanka. Sanka? Aha! So you're Glasses Guy! You tricked Huni and Toba into telling you a bunch of stories! What does it matter? A name is a superficial label. It's what's deep down inside that counts. And I've shown you the deepest parts of me. That would explain a lot. Why else would you show up here and start acting like a wise guy? You looking for a fight? Eh, I'll pass. I do rather like you, as I've said before, but my one quibble is that you really don't know your own strength. Wait, of course. You're the one behind all the recent Abyss activity. Let Paimon guess, you've been provoking the Mountain King too. Haven't I told you before? I'm not part of the inner circle who do our highness's bidding. My interests are far more low stakes. I spend my time digging for truth in ancient doodads and books. You really think a benchwarmer like me is capable of more than that? I investigated him. He's not connected to the recent events. Just happens to be in the area. So, I struck a deal with him. He helps me summon a rift. I allow him to do some... historical research. But that's all over. And now Kinich wants to hand me over to you. Well, I was hoping this would be an opportune moment to whisk away his body. That would have given me some more time to study the great Kahula Hao. But now I've run into you, which is just my luck. Or maybe I've incited the wrath of the Turnfire, and this is the price I have to pay. But I don't understand. What did I do wrong? Wait, does that count? Hmm, let me think. How? You are the worst of the worst! Colluding with the Abyss Order against Kanich? How could you betray your partner? Uh, there is no betrayal. The almighty Dragon Lord Kahula How is a partner to no one. Don't worry, I told him to act as bait. Yes. And you should have picked a bigger fish! The Abyss Order? Ha! What a joke. Not even a match for our lowly servant. I put up with this toad's croaking for days, and it was all for nothing! It looks like your disciplinary measures have been less than effective, Mr. Enjo. Ah, uh, what did you expect? Behavioral rehab isn't really our thing. Otherwise, we might as well change our name from the Abyss Order to the Abyss Boarding School. The abysmal disorder would suit you better. Uh, Kanish! Dispose of him! He is of no further use to us! Traveler? You see, this is why I like you. Still, you shouldn't underestimate me just because I'm a lowly clerk. I could never beat you in a straight-up fight. But when it comes to running away, I won't lose to anyone! Do me a favor, and remember how fast I disappear! Maybe then you'll show me a little respect next time. Darn! He got away again! Couldn't you have stopped him? It's alright. He's not worth our time and energy. 
Besides, it seems like he's in debt to a lot of people. I'm sure they'll keep him busy. <sighs> if you say so. Still, Paimon's kinda surprised that you actually struck a deal with someone from the Abyss Order. To borrow that guy's words, names are superficial labels. Whether you call it the Abyss Order or anything else, it's a broad generalization at best. Think of it like apples that have fallen from a tree. If you tasted each one, you'd find that they're all at different stages of ripening. Even the unripe fruit blown off its branch before it's fully grown can still be brewed into a fine wine. Everything has its use. Huh. Well, in that specific sense, maybe Enjo's not such a bad apple. Not rotten to the core, at least. Of course! Only the almighty Dragon Lord, Kahula Howe, is rotten to the core and evil beyond redemption! Ugh. So what exactly are you anyway? You're definitely the evilest little thing Paimon's ever met! Don't worry. He can't hurt a fly. Hmm, you could say that. Uh, Paimon heard that those kinds of contracts might come with a terrible cost attached. Is that true? Such as... a howl watching me like a ravenous vulture? Vulture? Vulture?! Uh, we are the Dragon Supreme! Sovereign ruler of the Nation of Flame! Let's pick this up another time. It's getting kinda late. You should go back and get some rest. Big day ahead. Tomorrow's Turnfire Night. Time to light the Sacred Flame and burn away the filth for a legendary 500-year-old warrior. Oh yeah. Hearing you lay it out like that is making Paimon a little nervous. For all the work we've put in, it all comes down to tomorrow night. We have to make sure we solve this problem once and for all. Then it can't hurt to say this one more time. Good luck to us both. See you tomorrow. What happened to getting some rest? You're cautious, like me. I get it. But don't worry, like I said, I investigated, and I'm confident he has nothing to do with the Mountain King situation. Before he got tangled up with us, he was looking into the Mare Javari. That's another major part of Natland's history. Our ancestor, Burkina, once fought a campaign there alongside the five other heroes. But it's not such an easy place to get to these days. That's about all I know, though. I have yet to take a job that involves the Mare Javari. What happened to getting some rest? <laughs> the house piqued your interest, huh? It's true that he's a relic from an earlier Saurian age, but since we're bound to each other by a contract, you can see him as my companion for now. I know he can be awful, but don't worry. As long as I'm still around, he can't do that much damage. Mm-hmm. That's a key part of the contract. The How has to obey my orders and lend me his power for as long as I live. And after I die, a how gets control of my body. That's the price. Crazy, isn't it? That was probably the first time I really appreciated what it meant to pay a price. Then once I signed the contract, I received the ancient name Malipo. But that's a whole other story. We can get into it another time if you're interested. Ah, at long last, you're back. I hear you've done much for our people these last few days. Everyone has nothing but praise for you. Many young people have heard the rumors, too. They're all eager to meet our new flame bearer. Well, they won't have to wait for long. It's almost time for the ceremony. We really hope we can resolve the Mountain King situation quickly and smoothly. Seems like a lot of people have been worrying about it, huh? <laughs> well, it's nearly time. 
So, if you're ready, then follow me to the ceremony site. Here we are. Our honored guests have arrived. I have heard much about your fine work over the past few days. I hope you'll allow us to thank you properly after tonight's ceremony. Don't worry about it. Getting this huge venue ready must have been a huge task. No need to make extra work for yourselves on our account. Oh, if it means getting the Mountain King issue resolved, no cost is too great to bear. A resolution will come in due course but every great fire starts as a tiny spark. We must take it one step at a time. No one would disagree with you if that were possible, Chief, but it's been far too long since we've seen a real step forward. Look around you. Can't you see how our numbers have dwindled since the last turn fire night? The ceremony was arranged on short notice. Many are away from home and could not make it back in time. That may be so, but still. Good evening, Traveler and Paimon. Kanich! Not a moment too soon. Chief Wayna, Elder Trinidad, could you give us a minute? I'd like to give the Traveler a few pointers as the previous flame bearer. Uh, very well, but make it quick. Let me know when you're done and we will begin the ceremony. Let's step to the side. Has anyone gone over the key steps of the ceremony with you yet? Yeah, Elder Trinidad did, but, uh, Paimon seems to have forgotten them. What a surprise! The flying ant has an ant-sized brain. If you don't want your tongue to be burned off by the sacred flame tonight, I suggest you stay quiet. <sighs> See those sacred flame pillars? Once you've lit the fire, go light each one up in turn. Once that's done, head down into the cave where the Mountain King slumbers, light the braziers along the way, then bring the flame to the final altar. Then the ceremony is complete. That sounds simple enough. The process isn't complicated, but remember, you mustn't turn back at any point. If you miss a pillar, you can't light the next one, then come back to it. You have to keep moving forward, or it's seen as disrespecting our ancestors. If that happens, you won't receive the blessing of the turn fire, and you'll have to start over. I made you a diagram that summarizes the steps. Take a look. So that's our part. What about you? I'll be with you the whole way. And once you've lit the altar, I'll start summoning the rift. You can leave that side of things to me. Just focus on your part. Okay. We'll try to remember all that and get it right the first time. Ready when you are. But I think I saw Huni and the others just now. Maybe you should say hi before you start. Just tell the chief when you're ready. Mighty Outlanders, the time has finally come. You know what must be done. Please remember, you must cleanse as much abyssal energy as you can. This is the only way to prolong the Mountain King's slumber. I am sure you have what it takes. Mr. Traveler, you're finally here! I even dragged my uncle out to watch the ceremony. Although I'd hoped for the Malipo name bearer to perform this ceremony, that was never anything to do with you. So please don't take it personally. I got thinking last night, and I realized if the lesson of Malipo is to look forwards, then I should accept that my book is gone and start anew. Besides, I'll have even more to write about this time, given this will be our first turn fire ceremony featuring a flame bearer from another land. I'll be taking detailed notes. Good luck, Mr. Traveler. You got this. Off we go. Hey, bet you're surprised to see me. Didn't think I'd be coming, did you? 
I was all packed up and ready to go, but then I thought, I wonder if the ceremony will go any differently with the new flame bearer. So yeah, here I am again. I still owe you for that picture you took. So once you start, I'll be dancing to cheer you on. Don't be nervous, you'll do great. How are you doing? Is all in order? I'm counting on you. Don't forget what we talked about. By past fuel and present flame, life marches ever on. My brothers and sisters, the time has come to light the fire once again and let the Turnfire night shine bright in Hoitzitlan. Go get the sacred flame. <gasps> Mr. Traveler, you look so- You're gonna make sure the Mountain King- I believe in you. <sighs> Nicely done. Off to a good start. Great stuff. You're over halfway. Keep it up. Impressive. Just one more to go. Come on, one last push. The final sacred flame pillar is up ahead. Great. All the pillars are alight. Next, it's down into the canyon and head for the Mountain King's cave. Almost there. The cave is just up ahead. The abyss presence is growing strong. We should deal with the contamination first. There's the altar of the sacred flame. Remember, light up the torches around it first.
up ahead, right? That's him. Kangamato, king of the Yumkasaurs from 500 years ago. He's very powerful. Paimon can tell. He's huge! Let's tread carefully. We don't want to wake him up. You've made it at last. You did even better than I expected. Traveler, now comes the final and most important step of the ceremony. Please use the power of the sacred flame to cleanse the Mountain King of Abyssal Filth. There's no need this time. Hmm? Such strong Abyssal power. What is that thing? Kinich, what is the meaning of this? Is that a beastly rift? Chief Wyna, Elder Trinidad, this is about to get a little dangerous. You should step back. What do you think you're doing? Solving the Mountain King issue. You mean, by having him torn to pieces by Rift Hounds? No, stop! We can't let that happen! Foolish locusts! Ugh, can't you see? We're trying to shove your Locust King into the beastly Rift! Uh, but... But... I'm sorry, Chief Wyna and Elder Trinidad. This is the only way. Can you promise me that no harm will come to the Mountain King? I can't guarantee it, but I'm fairly confident. Traveler, this is not what we agreed on! You must cleanse the Mountain King of every last trace of abyssal contamination! Okay, I see what this is. You've been in cahoots this whole time! Ugh, you imbecile! What have you done?! Oh no! The device is destroyed! You forced my hand. I had no choice. Elder Trinidad? Uh, what are you doing? No. The Mountain King is waking up. He will cause even more casualties. Everyone, out! Now! <laughs> well, it seems there is only one way to awaken you all from your willful blindness. More sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Take me, oh Mountain King! Take me as your next sacrifice! Everyone's still outside. We have to keep the Mountain King here. Give me a hand! Shines eternal! Huh. Watch out for the fruits he's spitting out. We can use those against him. Yeah, that's it! Two. Present flame. Life marches ever on. Oh, Burkina. 
I must atone. Patience, we will answer to the fire for all our deeds. Even if one day I fall behind, never look back. Keep moving forward as we are now. Live with your guilt and shame. This is the price to pay. To the turn fire. Please use my ruined vessel to train the heroes of the future. The will of Kongamato will march ever on till the abyss is stamped out. Yesterday, huh? I don't wonder how things are doing now. Let's go ask the chief. Traveler, you've come at just the right time. I have some good news for you. Trinidad's condition is stabilized. He suffered burns on much of his body, but we believe he'll survive. Guess that's the best news we could hope for. Uh, I, I has to ask. Is everyone in your tribe such a risk taker? First Kenich, then Elder Trinidad? Is this the Scions of the Canopy's adventurous spirit in action? We're simply not afraid to charge ahead into the unknown. He's fine. Don't worry. He's gone to check on the Mountain King. Something most mysterious has happened. After the incident yesterday, a transparent shell has formed around the Mountain King's body. We don't understand the mechanism behind it but the shell appears to insulate him against the influence of abyssal power. It is somewhat akin to a scab, in that it stops the abyssal energy within him from bleeding out, while also preventing further abyssal energy from seeping in and infecting him. We've never seen anything like it. The tribe's most senior elders believe it was caused when he was burned by the sacred flame, similar to the way burned wood becomes charcoal. I think their theory makes sense. After all, We've never thrown the Mountain King directly into the Sacred Flame before. Wow. So it's made a barrier against Abyssal energy? That's... a, a good thing, right? It's practically a miracle from what we've seen of it so far. It means that the Mountain King's level of Abyssal energy is now stable. No longer will we need to perform an annual cleansing ceremony. Wow. That's amazing! I know what you're thinking. The young people in the tribe are already speculating that yesterday's ceremony was a turnfire night like none other in our history. Because you and Kenich, you summoned the very flame that appears in our ancient legends. A great transparent ball of fire. And that fire is what saved the Mountain King. Oh, so that was the real turnfire? <laughs> I may be the chief of this tribe but I've only ever known the turn fire as a concept in our legends. I cannot answer that question. If anyone can answer it, I suspect it would be the bearer of the Malipo name. He is in the Mountain King's cave as we speak. Ah, so Kenich then. Why don't we go see how he's doing? Time to go. Time to go. Hey, 
Hey, yourselves. <laughs> you two doing okay after yesterday? We were gonna ask you the same question. You scared Paimon half to death when you rushed into the fire. Sorry. I couldn't just stand and watch the Mountain King get burned alive. So you thought you'd try and extinguish the sacred flame with Dendro? Or is that an attempt to make the almighty Dragon Lord Kahulahau die of laughter? <sighs> the sacred flame only possesses a fraction of the Pyro Archon's power. It's not as if I was fighting the Pyro Archon herself. Kanich, when you went into the flames, were you intending to... Uh, Intending to what? To... um... Do the same thing as Burkina. Sacrifice myself? Of course not. My focus was on keeping the Mountain King alive, not on what it would cost. But now I'm curious. What made you think I was going to sacrifice myself? Well, because everyone's saying the Turnfire is what saved the King last night. And Ponchi's theory was that summoning the Turnfire is a tit-for-tat exchange, right? So, Paimon thought you decided to pay for it with your life. So you've heard that rumor, too. I'm afraid I can't say for sure. What happened yesterday was a first for me, too. Well, even if you don't know, there's probably no one in the world who does. What I would say is, if that really was the power of the Turnfire, I'd sooner believe that the Mountain King summoned it himself. The Mountain King? Then what price did he pay? The core meaning of price is not atonement or compensation, but what you're willing to give up in order to obtain what you want. It's easy to die for your sins. Much harder to live with the guilt and keep on going. In the end, the Mountain King chose the latter option. For Burkina and for the tribe. That's the price he paid. Alright, so how is the Mountain King doing now? Health-wise, there's nothing to worry about. He'll enter a fighting stance whenever we set foot in his territory. But his attacks are gentler now and not as crazed as before. Like he said yesterday, he just intends to be a sparring partner for people to practice with. Yeah, I tried communicating with him again, but he didn't respond. <laughs> we dare say that Locust King has well and truly lost its mind. The lights are on, but nobody is home. Its body remains fighting fit thanks to the perverse power of the Abyss, but time has been less kind to its soul. It was ground to a pulp long ago. But we saw him come back to his senses yesterday. That was merely one last burst of brain activity before it croaked. As you humans would say, it went out with a bang. Oh, come on! Stop being such a doomer. Paimon bets the Mountain King has finally let go of the tragedies of the past now, and is focusing on moving forward. That's why he doesn't have time to chat with us. He's too busy thinking about the future! <laughs> well, at least it means my fellow tribes people can move forward now, too. Thank you for your help, Traveler. I owe you one. Yeah, that's right. You caught Enjo for us, remember? But he ended up being completely useless. It's not a fair trade if you lost out. Ah, uh, that's on him. It's not your fault he's useless. Besides, we're friends now. You don't know us anything! Friends? But your friendship is an even more valuable gift. I can't in good conscience accept it for free. So, promise me. If you need anything in the future, you'll come to me. For you, I'll do anything. Only poor little Hooney got the sad ending? Yeah, everyone's happy except me. First Nana, then my dad. Why does everyone in my family have to suffer? Hooney, it'll be okay. Your dad will get better soon. Toba, you're my friend, so I shouldn't say this to your face. But it was all the Mountain King's fault. Huh? Now hold your horses, kiddo. If you promise not to fight, Uncle Sanka will tell you a story. 
Okay, before you roll your eyes out of your skull, I promise you can trust me. I almost got my eyebrows burned off by the turn fire after last time. That's why I came back to make it up to you. All right, I'll just get to the point. Do you know what Uncle Sanka loves the most about your people? Uh, what? Your extreme sports. Huh? On my first day here, I got hit by someone falling out of the sky. I believe you call it bungee jumping? It's a dangerous sport to be sure, but the courage it took to make the jump impressed the heck out of me. So, I introduced myself to the jumper, we made friends, and I even helped treat her wounds. Oh, such a nice friend. Of course. Anyway, the good times didn't last, because I got captured by a powerful foe, so we had to part ways for a while. In the hands of the enemy, I was scorned, scolded, and nearly given away as a gift. Oh, it was so humiliating. A horrible experience to look back on. Why does Uncle Sanka always have to suffer, I thought. So I feel your pain, Huni. I was in the same position. But in the end, I made it through, and I left all of those painful memories in the past. I even managed to reunite with my friend. Uh, is that it? The moral of the story is to look forward in life, right? Yeah, we've heard that one millions of times. Sorry, Uncle Sanka, but you're not cut out to be a teacher. Very smart, Huni, but not quite smart enough. What I'm trying to tell you is that after I reunited with my friend, I found her injuries were all healed, but she really missed her family. So, I thought you might like to see her too. She's right behind you. Turn around and see. Another trick about not turning back? I'm not falling for that one again. Huh? 